Want to know the best Google Shopping plugin for your WooCommerce store on WordPress? I'm gonna show you the two plugins that I like to use that are free in this video. Let's go. Okay guys, Sam here from keycommerce.com and so you need to have a plugin in your WordPress WooCommerce dashboard to make sure that you can send your product data to Google Merchant Center before you can create your Google Shopping ads. I'm gonna show you the one that I use right now so you can really quickly get that feed set up and get your shopping campaigns live for your WooCommerce e-commerce store. Also, if you're new here, my name is Sam and I make a lot of videos just like this one on growing your e-commerce store. So please consider checking out my channel, the rest of my videos and consider subscribing to get more daily updates on the new videos that I'm putting out every single day. Okay, let's jump into my computer and I'll show you the plugins that I like to use. Let's go. Hey guys, we're now on my computer and let's install the shopping feed app in WooCommerce and WordPress. So we're in the WordPress dashboard right now. We're gonna go down to plugins and we're gonna go in, click add new, and we're gonna search for product feed pro. This is the one I recommend. A lot of the people I know use this. I'm gonna click install and activate this one. A lot of installations, a lot of great five star reviews. Okay, now it's been added in there. Before we start creating the actual feed, we need to go into our products and we're gonna to go to attributes. So we need to add some custom attributes to our products that aren't in your products normally. And this is for Google Shopping because Google Shopping needs some extra information. So the first thing is we need to add in the brand. Then we're gonna add in GTIN and then add in MPN. Just follow what I'm doing here. This just creates these different attributes and now we're going to add them to our products. So I'm gonna go into our products. So I've got this product here, let me edit this one. Now, when you scroll down in this, this little window here for WooCommerce, you'll see attributes. And we want to make sure that we select each of these. So usually these, so this one's in there right now, it's been added in. We wanna make sure we click add and then add all of them. So see how we have all these attributes in here let me move my big head. And so now what we do is we wanna add in the brand for this product. So you're gonna to have to do this for each of your products. So this is a surfboard. So I'm gonna put in uh, the S7 um, as the brand. That's gonna go in there like that. The MPN, this is like the model number, the manufacturing product number basically. Um, and what this, this is, it's like an identifying number for the product. Now, you, in Google Shopping, you need to have either the GTIN or the brand and the MPN. Okay, so either either the, the brand and MPN or the GTIN. Okay, this is a massive problem with a lot of feeds. This is where a lot of people come unstuck when they set up their first feed. The GTIN, that's this global identification number. So if you're selling a product that's supplied officially by someone, it's not something that you've made yourself, you will be able to find the GTIN. Whether you contact the supplier or you can Google it, you know, you'll find the GTIN and then you'll add that official one in. You can also apply and basically register or purchase a GTIN if you manufacture that product yourself. That's basically like the barcode number. So you, one day you might need it if you start you know, um, stocking in, in retail stores and stuff like that. Um, but if you don't have it yet, you can basically use the MPN. MPN, you can basically, it's a bit of a gray area, but you know, you can create that yourself. I would just use the SKU um, and then just so that you can get it approved. So let me just put in the uh, S7, let me just put in some random numbers there. Oh, no, I actually need to go over here, sorry, and add that in. Um, and that's all good. Um, what I'll, I'll do is I'll also add in some sort of GTIN here, just so that we have it. Oh, I keep forgetting to do that. Do that in there like that. And then make sure you, you make sure it's not visible on the product page, unless you really wanna show the brand and all this information, it's generally not required as long as it's there for that product so that we can then put it through the feed. So save attributes. Okay, awesome. Now let's go set up our feed. So let's go to Product Feed Pro and it's gonna ask us to create our first feed. Our first one, you can just do Google Shopping because that's what we're doing here. Select your country, I'm gonna put Australia. Uh, it's gonna select Google Shopping feed, that's awesome. Include product variations, so this is gonna split out the products into different variations if you'd like. It really depends on what you're doing here. That's that's a whole other topic that I won't get into right now. I'm gonna leave it as is because this product doesn't have variations. Um, and it's gonna be in an XML file, that's totally fine. Refresh interval is gonna be daily. Yep, that's totally fine as well. Save and continue. Okay, this part here is called the field mapping section. This is where we basically tell 
uh, the, the software here and tell Merchant Center what parts of the required attributes in Google Merchant Center the actual parts of the product are. So let me try and explain that a bit better. So these are all bits, oh, like um, these, these are all bits in WooCommerce for your products and you wanna match them to what Google really needs. So see Google ID, uh, product ID and product ID is pretty much the same. It's called product title in Merchant Center, but it's called product name in WooCommerce. So this basically figures out, okay, which one is which, you've got all this data in WooCommerce and then you need this data in, in Merchant Center. So how do you match them up like this? So availability, that's stock status, you know, availability. Um, so yeah, price matches up cat, uh, Google product category. That's fine for the moment. We'll edit that in a second. But the biggest thing and the reason why we created those attributes previously was because we want to match the brand here to what we just created. So you're going to scroll down all the way down to dynamic attributes, brand, GTIN, scroll all the way down to GTIN and then MPN, same thing all the way down to MPN. Fantastic. So they're all there like that. That's all fine. Click save. It's now going to go to the next page. This now asks us for the Google shopping category for these products. I've only got one product in there. It doesn't have a category right now, you know, but it'll have the, the different categories pulling in from WooCommerce. So what I've got over here, and I'll put a link to this in the description. This is the Google, uh, Google product categories that you need to choose for your products. It's a massive, massive list and it has this code and then the category. So, you know, this is something you're gonna have to do for all your products. And if you have a lot of products that are all very different, this is gonna take a bit of time. So maybe get a, a virtual assistant to do this, a virtual assistant to do this for you. I'm just gonna, what I do is I just search for like something about the product and I just keep searching until I find what matches best. So this is a surfboard. So I found surfboards here, but say you're selling couches. Maybe there's a couch. Let's have a look. Nope. Maybe there's a lounge, so keep trying different vocabulary. Uh, loungewear, I might be called a sofa. Let's have a look, sun lounge is there. Let's see, sofa, that might be it. Sofa, yes, furniture, sofa, so that would be 460. So I'm gonna go back to surfboards. Um, surfboards, cool, and this is just a regular surfboard, 3320. So for that one's gonna be 3320, and then it pulls it up. That's fine, save mappings. And then this is gonna ask if you wanna set any filters or rules so you can do stuff like change different parts of the feed depending on rules. So maybe, you know, add branding to the end of all titles and stuff like that. That's a bit more advanced and, uh, and I, I recommend watching my video on uh, product title optimizations and optimizing your product feed. I'm gonna leave a link in the description as well to check that out, but you can just click continue just to get it started. This asks if you want to add UTM analytics codes um, in there to the, to the links. Um, yeah, I would add that in just so that it gets, gives you extra data in Google Analytics. And then boom, we now have our, um, our product feed created in Product Feed Pro in WooCommerce. So you can go here and it's going to have the XML file, see, right there. So boom, this actually has the feed. So it pulls in all that data that we, we told it. The GTIN's there, the MPN's there. Awesome. We're now going to go to Merchant Center. We're going to go in and go to Products and then Feeds just over here. Click plus, so this creates a new feed. Choose the country, make sure it's the same as the country you set in the feed originally. Language, English, shopping ads, service across Google, that's totally fine. And we're gonna click scheduled fetch. I'm gonna call this WooCommerce feed. That's totally fine, continue. Okay, now we're gonna put in the file URL down here. Okay guys, for the file name, you're gonna grab the last bit of the file URL, I put that as the file name just in there. Fetch frequency daily, that's totally fine. Fetch time 12 a.m., your time zone, no username and password, everything's fine. Let's click create feed. Once that's created, we'll now see it here. And now we need to go and fetch our feed. Click fetch now. It's then going to spend a couple of minutes processing that feed. And then once it's finished, you know, I would come back, go grab a coffee, come back in five minutes and click refresh. Depending on how many products you have in your feed, it will take a couple of minutes to get that all sorted and processed. Google is then going to tell you a bunch of errors if you have errors, like stuff like fixing up your shipping information, maybe the URLs aren't working well, and you're gonna have to go through and fix them. And this is quite a painful process. I'm not gonna go through it in this video because that can take you know, a good 20 to 60 minutes, even more. Um, sometimes with more, more complicated errors, you're gonna be calling Google and talking to them about this, and that's a whole process in itself. 
Um, but yeah, I recommend checking out my other videos on getting your product feed approved. It can be pretty painful, but just keep Googling the different errors and usually there's some sort of solution out there. It takes some time, but once you get it approved, then you can create your Google shopping campaigns and then start making some good money. Okay guys, they are the two Google shopping plugins that I recommend for your WooCommerce store. If you have any questions at all, please leave them in the comments. I try to answer every single one. If this video was valuable, please hit the like button. Tell YouTube that I'm making good stuff out there for my audience. Otherwise, if you want to learn more about growing your e-commerce store, consider subscribing and check out my channel. All my other videos are over there. Anyway, guys, thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.